Hi, and welcome to Real Trail Talk. I'm Donovan D'Souza from The Long Way is Better. And I'm Mark Pybus from The Life of Pi. Welcome to episode 24. We're back on the Billman track, and joining us today is Bonnie from the soon-to-be-launched Friendly Drop Bear. Hello. Uh, so, if you didn't listen to the Hike Your Own Hike podcast, first of all, welcome. I hope you listen to every episode and go back into the catalogue. So, we're continuing on our Billman journey. We last saw the track at Donnelly River Village, so we're going to head off to Pemberton. It's a five-day stretch, about 120-odd k's, is it? Donovan? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? I, I think so. <laughs> Consult the guidebook. Let's, uh... We have the guidebook because Donovan's going to quote it later. <laughs> uh, the guidebook takes forever to work out. <laughs> the, Actually, no, the trip planner not, on the website. It's not because days. it starts at Donnelly River because it's the oh, old south course. one. So yes. it actually makes it very easy. Um, I've got it here in front of me. <laughs> it is 108 Ks according to the Billman track. We have four campsites to get through, and I mean, depending if you double or not, it should take you about four to five days. But doubling here is quite difficult with yeah. the, the length of the campsites. Um, and it's one that, because it's five, I think what is good about it is you can tack on the previous section or the section after it if you want to make it a week or eight days, as, yeah. as we did. Mm. Um, I think it's it's very convenient in that sense that if you're looking to do something that's a week long, it's a great section to do because the, the, the bits on either side, I think, are good companions for it. They are. And, yeah. They're only three days each, too. So exactly. it's perfect. Okay, so we have already heard about our thoughts on Donnelly River, but Bonnie, we haven't heard your thoughts. What do you think about Donnelly River as a track town? I love Donnelly River. I like all the animals. I suppose everyone says that, but it's it's really fun going there and seeing all the kangaroos and the emus, and it just has a nice feel about it, all the old wooden cottages. And the, the general store's nice too. It's very cosy, and the man who works there is really friendly and helpful. Who is also the local Greens member. So oh. there you go. And the mayor of Donnelly River. Interesting. <laughs> so he's not just a man that works there. <laughs> he's a, yeah, the local politician. Hmm. Bit of a renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll get on to the hiking. So we've got the first day to Tom Road. And it's a kind of, it is the shortest day of the, the whole hike. And it is a bit of a transition period to the full blown carry forest. Mm. So, what are you guys' thoughts on day one? My thoughts of the first day, I don't know if it's influenced by the, the weather and everything, it always is, but I thought it was okay, but it gets a lot better further on. Like The for the Carrier Forest is always beautiful, but it's not quite as tall and impressive, and the trees are a bit thinner. When I walked through in October, there were lots of beautiful wildflowers out there, so I, I enjoyed that aspect. Yeah, it was nice. I, I would do it again, but compared to the next section and the one after... It's it's like a an introduction. Mm. One of the things that I really liked about it, and I guess it's because of the time of year that I did it, was this is when you first really see the Donnelly River. I'm pretty sure. I don't think you see, you don't see it before, do you? No, no, no. Yeah. You see another river that you might think is the Donnelly River, but it's not, is it? Yeah, yeah. And so the time of year that we did it was that September two years ago. That was I think the wettest September we'd had in like ten years. Mm -hmm. That was the year when we didn't have a spring. It just went from winter Correct. straight to summer. Yeah. yeah, and that was we were there the day on the day that it snowed on Bluff Knoll. Uh, so it was a really wet, cold day, but it was perfect. Like everything yeah. looked beautiful. All all the rivers were flowing, and I actually really enjoyed this section. Alyssa. <laughs> Didn't really like it because she really liked Donnelly River and wanted to stay. <laughs> Don't blame her. <laughs> you had to drag her kicking and screaming out. Yeah, exactly. So she was really grumpy. But one of the things that I will say that's really interesting is because we think of this section as being carry forest, carry forest, carry forest. But it's not. There's bits there. Like when you leave town, there's carry forest. And then you're suddenly in Jarrah Forest. Yeah. And I think it's something that... People need to keep in mind because you think of, and even when I th I think back to it now, I always think Carry Forest, but it's actually a bit more nuanced than no, that. No, there's definitely, um, especially further down the Donnelly River when you're going up up and down the hills, it seems like there's often um, Jarrah, Mary Forest on like, higher up and Carry down in the valley. Yeah. And you also yeah. get sections of regrowth forest and sections of much older 
forest as well, like mm. in the carry. So it's all quite different. It was interesting what you said about it raining when you did that first day because I thought at the time, I thought I'm really loving these wildflowers, but I think I would enjoy this section more in the middle of winter. Oh, it was awesome. Being, it would have been. Yeah, being so wet and watch, having the river because I think this section of all the rivers on the track, it is really legible how the, the track's relationship to the river is so much a part of this town-to-town section. I don't think any other river gets quite as much love the way that it does on the on the Bibbulmun in terms of you know following one river from the first day to the last day. Yeah. Mm, certainly, like, the Warren River would probably be the next best one, and you're only on that for a couple of days as well. Exactly. Whereas, yeah, at least the Donnelly River, yeah, you kind of, you're in touch with it, then you climb up a hill, and then it's there again, and... Yeah. Yeah, it's really good following its path. Well, you're on it, you're on it for two full days, really, because, like, the, the first day you do see it, but it's not, you don't feel like you're on the river the whole time, like, the next few days... I think I, I did. Or maybe you did. W- the and time I of year we so did much. it. Yeah. There, was, you know, there was so much water, so it yeah. felt like we were following a river all day. I, I don't think it's the best day at this. I think there are better days later on. But at the time of year that we did it, it suddenly felt like, oh, we, we're following the river. Yeah. Yeah, I had it the other way. We had a really dry autumn last year when we did it, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll do it in June. It'll be fine. It'll be raining. It was so dry. Like, I remember walking out of town and you said the Jarrah Forest was there and you'll love this, Don. It was burnt. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) I'd done a prescribed burn, obviously, earlier in the year and it just, I like, I walked out of town I was just like, "Uh uh-oh, like, I hope it isn't like this the whole way. (laughs) And thankfully it only lasted, I don't know, maybe a kilometre or two. And then you hit the Mundabidi and I could see the tyre marks on the Billman where it wasn't the Mundabidi. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to come across a cyclist who thinks this is a better track. And you can see why because you cross the Mundabidi and it's just like wide road. And it's like, well, of course the Billman looks appealing to them because it's, you know, up and down hills and there's switchbacks and everything. Yeah. But yeah, it's once you hit that carry forest, it's just like you, wow, I'm in in the what I want to be. I remember it was sort of mid-morning and it kind of everything was a little bit wet still and there was just sun shining through and it was like a land before time moment I think I wrote. <laughs> yeah. It was a yeah, big smile on my face bounding off towards the, the giant trees. Mm. Yeah, it was completely dry when I went through but I spent a lot of time looking at all the flowers because there were so many, you know, the purple and yellow flowers of the Cary Forest and there's like so many of them out at that time of year. So I think we, we went through quite slowly because me and one of my friends I was with take a lot of photos when we see flowers. But the trees themselves, I was like, oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's Cary. I love Cary Forest, but there's more impressive Cary Forest further south. Yeah, for sure. However, I think the campsite, Tom Road, I think is one, sensational. Of the, yeah, one of the best on the yeah. whole track. I can see why of the 1988 campsites, it was the one they kept. Yep. Because it is magnificent. I think it would be a top five on the track, maybe. How about you guys? Definitely top ten, maybe top five. Mm -hmm. I just love how, like, it's really cosy, but also, like, it's very natural and lovely with the river there. Mm -hmm. And then those really interesting rocks a little bit further down. Yeah, I I put my tent down near the river, as, as close to the river as I could in a tent site but just across from those rocks. That's. I think that the tent sites at the bottom there are some of the best tent sites yes. at a campsite. I agree. I yeah. love it. Yeah, in terms of like areas to explore around the campsite, I think Tom Road definitely for sure top five because some of them you get and you're like, oh, yeah, this is really pretty, but just the area around the campsite is that's it. Yeah. Whereas this, you can wander down to the river and, you know, there's different tent pad areas. Mm. And yeah, well, I think because I'm not sure when you were there, it would have been the Donnelly River would have been flowing quite oh, fast. Definitely. I could actually walk along a log to get to those two giant boulders. Oh, wow. And like explore that area. I was having quite a lot of fun. And then just like just having dinner down by the river. When, when we were there, we were really lucky because it was a terrible day weather wise. We got into the hut at a really good time. We were really powered through and got there really early. And then the weather just turned terrible. And then it recovered for like half an hour where we, when I took all the photos of the the rocks, we went with the the whole group of us who were at the the hut because we had quite a number of people that we were walking with for a number of days. And it was just perfectly nice. There's no rain. Sun came out. Only lasted half an hour, but it was just that perfect 
moment. And then yeah. it, it went really cold. It went, you know, as I said, it snowed on Bluff Knoll that day. And you, I could, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But it's such a cosy camp, so it's so sheltered. Like it when is. we were there, it was like the water was like a mirror. I loved mm. that. But I'm going to be controversial. I, I found it, claustrophobic the wrong word, but I found it quite a small camping area. So there's a bit to explore, but you, like some of them you can explore a long way or yeah. go for a long walk. Whereas Tom Road, I felt it was very contained and cosy, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I, lo- I loved it. Mm. And did you go for a swim when you were there? It was 11 degrees. Oh, I, I still would have gone for a swim. But, yeah, it was quite a hot day when, when we walked it. So when we got there, the swim was most welcome, except the water was freezing. It felt like it took about half an hour to get into the water, but it was very refreshing, and it's a beautiful swimming area. Mm. Although one of my friends got a leech. Ooh. So we'll move on to day two. Oh, can I just say one thing about the height? No. <laughs> One thing I just wanted to say uh, before we move on is that the hut there is actually a really interesting one. And it's totally a nerdy thing because I think uh, most people will have no idea. Yeah, I know but where you're going. <laughs> this, this is one of the most unique huts on the whole track. Cause it's because a, it's got its name on the side instead of the front? No. <laughs> it's because it's a prototype deep hut, deep uh, deep south. I see. There's yes. safety issues here, isn't there? Yeah, because the later designs... When you for the bunks, the pole goes all the way to the roof, so you can hold on to something. This one, the the pole just ends, and it's so the upper level is just like a a level, and there's no pole going all the way to hold on to. So it's it's a bit more dangerous, but it's cool in the sense that it's like oh, this is like something they did as a trial, and then they realised that oh, this wasn't a good idea, and then they yeah. updated it. I wonder if the rammed earth huts will have that. Like- the first ones will have some strange anomalies that everyone might be griping about now, but then they might change it. And then and then one day in 25 years, you'll go to them, you'll go to Possum Springs, and you'll be like, oh, isn't this interesting? It's yeah. Got, yeah, the it's crumbly got, walls. <laughs> crumbly walls and very high cross beams. Yeah, yeah, that are impossibly high for anyone to reach. Yeah. No, that's a good point, because I actually did sleep on the top bunk that night. And it didn't cross my mind until you mentioned, or Steve mentioned it when we were talking about it. But yeah, it was very awkward to climb up and down, especially at night when you don't have a lot of light. Yeah. And we do this thing where we set up our tent in the hut anyway on the upper bunk. That's our preferred deep south top left up there with our tent. And that's how we had it set up. And it just fits, uh, the tent that we had at the time just fits perfectly there. But normally, you know, when you get out of the tent, you hold it, we hold onto the pole. Yeah. And I sort of came out and went, oh, <laughs> a bit awkward. <laughs> All right. Are we allowed to move on to day two? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so day two is to boarding house. And this is kind of, this was, you were halfway through your trip almost because you came from bailing up. Yeah, that's right. On your long trip. Yeah, I was still finding my feet at this stage. And it is one of the longer days on the yeah. trail. I think the last day is the longest, but this is quite long. Some interesting walking. There's not yeah. a lot of... like. There's a few features and there's more features on day two than, say, day one. But it, there is kind of that slog to Greens Island. I really love this day, though. Yeah. I think I, it's a fantastic one. I really love, love it as well. Although I have a different experience because I've done section hikes. So I did the One Tree Bridge from Tom Road. And then I've also done the section south from One Tree Bridge. I've done that in bits and bobs several, many times over and just almost all the way through and only once. So I haven't had the experience of walking the full 24 Ks and getting sick of it towards the end. Mm. So I, I love that whole section especially near greens island and like mm. along the donnelly river i love that bit yeah mm. i think for me this section if you're saying that the donnelly river village to pemberton section is the story of the donnelly river that this is probably the platonic form of this section of the track because it really is all about the Donnelly River. It I think is. You don't leave it for basically the whole day. Once you reach the Donnelly River, you're at the Donnelly River for the whole day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that about this section. And the bit that you're quite right, from Greens Island to One Tree Bridge, there's a section that is part of the 1988 Bibbleman track. There was a hand cut section of track. Oh. And it's really fantastic. Like, yeah. It just goes along the river and there's all those like logs that have fallen across that you could explore. Mm. Really lovely walking. 
Yeah, that one, the thing that strikes me about that section is the watercolour when I went through. It was like this turquoisey green, like yeah. fluorescent, um, yeah, like blue. And yeah, you say like that hand cut trail, you can tell because it's just up and down and twisting and it's just an amazing experience because you're right there on the river. There's no, like, you're going to go off into the forest here and cut through and it's just, yeah, all river. And it's beautiful. And I think another thing worth mentioning before we keep walking down the track is Greens Island is a really good car camping spot mm. where, uh, where I've stayed before. Like if you're just in the area and you want to do some day hiking, it's a really good place to stay. And we, we stayed there the night before we did Donnelly River to um, One Tree Bridge. Although, of course, A, you have to pay and B, you'd be missing out on Tom Road. It's actually a better way of dividing that section, I think, in yeah. terms of a more reasonable length. Yeah, for, for the, the distance. Mm. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of weird coming across campsites like that. It is. And then there's a few others as well, like Chapel's Bridge. I Mm. stayed there a few weeks ago. That's a good one to know about if you're doing a section hike and Mm. um, you want to stay the night before setting up. There's it, even a even a hut there. Yeah, it did look inviting because that was it's only a few k's away from boarding house, and <laughs> yeah. I thought mm, if you really I? wanted to, you, you could. Yeah. And that's a fr- free campsite too. Mm. Mm. But Maybe that's used um, by fishermen and mariners, isn't it? I'm not sure. I don't know many people who seem to know about it, to be honest. Mm. But I think we're jumping ahead a bit, aren't we? Sorry. A bit. That's okay. We can go back to <laughs> yeah. one. I think One Tree Bridge is a good spot. One to... Tree Bridge yeah. is that's yeah. a, a special place for me and my dad and my sister. Every time we go down south, for some reason, my dad loves the Carry Forest, and we always there's certain places that we always go no matter what. One of them is One Tree Bridge <laughs> and the Four Aces. All right. So yes, yeah, so I've done lots of little walks from there, and Glenoran Pool as well. It's a good place to swim. That's a little bit off the Bibbulmun. Mm. But in terms of the bridge, like you do when you see the actual traffic bridge, you think, oh yeah, there's one tree bridge, but that's not what it <laughs> no. is. No, you have to wander yeah. a little, little off the track into the picnic area, and then you get the whole history of the place. Mm. Um, but yeah, what's left of one tree bridge is quite fun. Yeah, because you can actually look down from like behind it over the river and get to see where it would have gone once yeah. upon a time. Yeah, and it's it's cool to see that sort of the history, and I think it's nice that later on in the section you get to walk across a few one tree yes. bridges. Mm. Yep. So that's that's nice that they've they've kept the tradition alive. But the bridge that they have there, the suspension bridge, I think before the one near Murray, was that the first suspension bridge you saw on the track? And no, the, the first one I saw was Deep River. But that's, sorry, if you're coming yeah, from Kalamunda. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because there's not many big rivers you actually have to cross. Yeah, because that's now now the second. I think that's the only, there's only three? Is that that's, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, if you don't count Beetle Oh, no, Falls. Beetle Up Falls. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but that's not that's the not, track, yeah, that's actually. That's a little side trip. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. three and a half. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, it's a cool little bridge, and it's got that, like, rustic feel to it with the way they've done the, the metal there. And that was the, like, I saw a couple there, and that was the last time I saw people for days. So, that's oh, right. why I always remember One Tree Bridge as that place. Yeah. And it's actually, it's a good spot um, distance-wise for lunch as well, because it's, like, bang in the middle of the day. Yeah. And there's little picnic areas, and mm. you kind of get to see cars driving by, and hoping someone will stop and offer you a piece of fruit or something. Yeah, that's that's where we stop for lunch as well. This yeah. is a really nice picnic area. And yeah, it's good. I think the other nice thing about it is that it breaks up the day well, not just time-wise, but also the trail changes a lot from that point. Mm. Mm. So mm. it's it's a real dividing line. And then after that, I really, really love that section of trail along the river from there to Chapel's Bridge and, and beyond to Boarding House. Mm. Like, it's a very, it's kind of, you, you think it's, oh, yeah, it's just the same thing all the way, which it is, I suppose. It's not like the next day where you're going up hills and down into valleys. But it's just so peaceful and so pleasant. Mm. And, yeah, it's one of the most peaceful walks I can think of. Yeah. It's pretty, it's not too difficult. Yeah, I, I think it's it does get a bit long, but I think at the point where I was starting to tire of it, they had that section where you can kind of go slightly off to the right and there's... Like a ledge? There's like a picnic area or like what maybe it was an old campsite. Yeah, I thought it looked like a campsite with the big rocks and, yeah, and there's the, the raging rapids. torrent of rapids. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's yeah. really cool because immediately at that point I was like, oh, this is, this is great, but I've had a lot of the same. And suddenly it's like, oh, this is great. Yeah. It's something different. And that's a good place to stop and have a, have a little break as well. Mm. 
Yeah, because it's right in the middle of that. Yeah, as you say, that really long section, you're just like, I'm happy to take my pack off and go explore this area. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Just leave it on the road. But that area always reminds me of the scene in Lord of the Rings and the Fellowship where they come across the ring race for the first time and there's like, you know, where they fall down like, oh, mushrooms and there's that little road and that's what it reminds me because on one side it kind of like goes down towards the river and then the other it's like there's a bank for a lot of it, Mm. just large trees and it just feels like you're walking somewhere magical like that even though you'll never see hobbits or wizards. (laughs) You you do see lots of mushrooms. Oh, yeah. yeah, at the right of time of year, in yeah. in May or June or around then, even July, so many mushrooms along there, mm. which can really slow you down. If you're me, anyway, and stop and look at every single mushroom and photograph them all. Yeah, so that one's got a different spot on. I have yeah. to take a photo. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa does a lot of that, a lot of stopping to take photos. Well, that's of one of the great things about walking through the forest. I, I love it, and yeah. the flowers as well, mm. and just the general feel of it. Like when, especially when it's misty. Mm. And then at different times of year, like I've walked through there in April and in May, it's very dry, as, as you experienced, Mark, in, mm. in June even. But then come back in August, I was just I was there just a few weeks ago, actually, and it's so different. It's mm. the, the river is all white water and flowing really fast. Mm. And I think the other thing I really like is there were a few moments there where along the river you can see the remnants of old bridges. Yeah. And that's really yeah, nice that's to cool. see. Um, you know, because there's there's not a lot of those really left, and you can it's cool how you can see that you're on a rail formation, and suddenly the track turns, and then if you just keep looking straight ahead, there's the old bridge. Yeah, mm. and that was a really nice thing I think along the section as well as those little just those little surprises that come up when you when you're thinking that this is much the same. There's just these things that you know, grab your attention. Mm. And I also think just the forest in general through there is quite nice. Like you've got some mm. really nice big trees and and the view through the trees across the valley when you can catch glimpses and see the the distant trees up on the hill as well. Because, mm. mm. yeah, where it rises in sections and it kind of, you can't see the river anymore but you can see the valley yeah. and you know it's there because you can see the tree trunks rising at different depths and, yeah. Which you get yeah. even better the next day but it's still it's mm. still really nice. Mm. One thing we haven't talked about is yes. that the halfway point is in Oh, yeah, yeah, the sign. Mean, meaning to get your guys' opinions on this because it means different things and being sectional hikers, is it like a thing that you would go wow and stop at or does it not mean as much if you're an end-to-ender? Yes and no. I think it would mean a lot more if you're actually on an end-to-end, which I look forward to doing one day. Mm. But even when you're on a, on a sectional end-to-end, it almost takes you by surprise because you're not thinking about the fact that you're halfway. And you, you sort of know you're going to see the sign. And then you see it and it's like, oh, it's a, one, of, one of the curiosities of the track. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's almost a bit whimsical. Yeah. I think when we were there, we were coincidentally... When we finished the section, we would we started it before the halfway point of our uh, in, end to end, and cool. at the end of it, we were at fifty. So it kind of felt like it was right. Yeah. And we were also doing it with three end to enders at, at the same time. So it would have been significant for them. Exactly, it was a very significant for them. Yeah, yeah. It kind of draws you out of your day, and just you you think of Kalamunda, and then you think yeah. of Albany, and then yeah, you like you got all these emotions going through your head and picturing different places. Yeah. And, like, I don't think it would be as powerful as if I did an end-to-end and I look forward to going back, yeah, as you say, one day. But yeah, it's just kind of like in a fairly, like not dull section, but it can lag on a little bit. A little bit samey, but yeah. lovely mm. section. Yeah, it just, yeah, adds another highlight to the day. Yeah, and there's mm. also a, a little bit of wondering, is is it really the halfway point? No. <laughs> that shifts constantly, yeah. doesn't it? Mm. You know? You know, technically, when I did my sectional, the bit from Brookton was closed. So it was you know, a bit different. Yeah. So the measurement wouldn't have been right. And, you know, I think everyone has those moments. If, if you do it right now, you're going to miss marrying up. Yeah. You know, so everyone always has those things that it's never going to be 100% right. Or even the way reckon. they've adjusted it from 975 or 973 or something to... 1,004 and then just recently to 1,005 as well. So that's yeah. changed it. But yeah, I mean, I suppose practicality-wise, they have to put it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're kind of we're moving on to Chapel's Bridge, which we've already brushed on, but it is quite a nice little hut campsite area. Yeah, it's an interesting little hut. It's got a, 
a fireplace under the veranda with a um, chimney thing, not really a chimney, like a gap in the roof that the smoke can go out. And it's got just one tiny bunk, which I don't even know if it's a bunk. And really nice location on the river as well. Yeah, it's really nice. The river, kind of like at Greens Island a, a bit, the river goes around it. And there's some, as well as the hut thing, there are some really nice places to put a tent as well and some picnic benches. And yeah, you can drive there, but not that many people seem to go there unless everyone starts talking about it and then they might. But it's a little bit off the beaten track. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, may as well move on to boarding house. So there's a, I remember this final three Ks or whatever it is just being torture. Like, oh really? I love it. That's like, it's probably because you really weren't love it. at the end of a. No. Well, well <laughs> a when day. I did that section, I did a really short hike just from Palings Road, camped at boarding house, and then I wanted because I wanted to get into trail running at that stage, which I have since done. Okay. But I thought I'll give it a go. I'll go for a run. It was really uncomfortable. Um, I had a little day pack on and it was like bouncing around. So I realised that's not how to do it. But I went for probably just a 5k run down to Chapel's Bridge and back. I yeah, I ran down there at about like just before sunset. So that section of forest is, is really beautiful. And then I did the same thing in the morning. I went for another run and it was misty, but I didn't run very fast because I kept wanting to take photos. Mm. Thrilling story. <laughs> 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 so, so coming to the end of your day, Don, how were you holding up and enjoying this uh, bit? Well, you know, as I said, I think we were getting a little bit tired. But on the plus side, I think compared to you, because you said this was your second day, this was, you know, we were already now, you know, f- five days in. So we were, I think, quite prepared for the length, which I think is a good thing I would advise people. If you're going to do this section, it's probably nice to do it from battling up for that reason. You can really get into it and so that you're in sort of good physical fitness for this longer days. So I really liked it. I think, you know, from the rapids on, there's all these things that are interesting, the little signposts along the way. So, you know, you've got the rapids, you've got some of the old rail bridges, you've got Chapel Bridge. Yeah. And the One Tree Bridge. And yes, the One Tree Bridge, yep. which leads across the river to, well, to a junction that then leads to the hut. So I think that that makes it a really, and that made it really enjoyable to me. And it, that bridge was something, you know, I think we've talked about little Donnie's things that he wanted to see. Um, I love little Donnie. <laughs> so this is something that, you know, in the 98 sort of press for the track, they had this photo of this bridge as one of the things. And as a kid, I really wanted to do the track. And I saw that. I was like, oh, this is something that looks so awesome. I hope I'll, you know, one day see it. And it was really, I was, I did. So I was really excited to see that. That really made the day for me when, especially when, you know, you're getting really tired. It's just that nice little pick me up that gets you to the end. Yeah. And you Um, also know that you're right near the campsite when you see it too. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar experience like this, that picture of the bridge is the reason I did this section when I did it. And I was just waiting for like, where is it? And then I saw it and just like, I just forgot that I was tired and sore and I was just amazed at, at you know just what it is like it's a carry tree covered in moss with a bit of chicken wire and some posts but it's just such a, an epic scene to come across that mm. you like unless you've seen pictures like you wouldn't really expect it, and that would be just the most amazing thing you'd ever seen yeah, and having it so close to the campsite as well it's the end you can slow down take your pack off take as many photos as you want which i did that afternoon and then again in the morning yeah i did the same yeah uh it's just yeah one of the the highlights of the track and one that i hope will continue if that ever like god forbid something happens to that bridge I god hope forbid they put a like a that checkered concrete oh. um, textured yeah stuff Please, no. You know, like... Probably, like, build a fake concrete carriage. (laughs) (laughs) Put that across. Um, That that would be a disaster. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned reasons for doing the track and Long Gully Bridge burning down. I think if you haven't done this section, do it before Yeah, before a fire comes through. Yeah, because the way things are going, we'll have no huts left by the end of the decade and there'll all be rammed earth replacements. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, boarding house campsites... (laughs) When you first walk in, I was expecting a little bit more as you round that corner. Yeah. But it grew on me as like the more time I spent there. It was 
Like it's not a bad little spot to be in. Yeah, it's not bad, but I think compared to the other huts along this section where every single one of them is right by the water, you know, mm. the water's you can walk there's a little side trail to the water, but it's mm. not really swimmable depth. No. Whereas the, every single other one, including Beetle Up, which may be a bit, bit dangerous because you could keep going to the falls. Yeah. Um you, you can swim in the water, whereas this one not really. So. Oh, not I, really... I still would have swum there. I didn't. Really? I swim almost everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Everywhere I think I possible. dipped my feet in. But it's not obvious when you're at the campsite. There's a little walker symbol pointing you into the bush, but it's not obvious that that leads down to the river and you've got the rapids and the rocks. Yeah. I think there's a missed opportunity there. Yeah. I think I mean, in some ways it's quite nice. It's a bit different to Tom Road, which where it's like really obvious and they've got big wide steps leading down into the water. Mm. And then boarding house is a bit more subtle. And if you go down to the water, it's a more peaceful experience. Like, I, I stayed there by myself. But mm. I imagine if it's busy, like there's a school group there or something, you could just go down to the water and it would be like a nice quiet place to sit. Yeah. I guess it lacks like a broad beach or open yeah, area to sit at or, or but golf. But it's all natural. Waterfront. It's all... Um, That's true. Yeah. It has its own charm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, the campsite yeah. itself is, is quite nice. I think in terms of being in the Carry Forest, Beavis is my favourite. But Boarding House, you still get that feeling of being deep in the forest. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got that little hill behind the campsite yeah. or the shelter and you've got the big carries. And yeah. it's just like you can feel yourself sandwiched between forest and, and river. I mean, it's, it's, it's an okay campsite. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not one that I go, wow, this is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> like Blackwood, which is bleak. I as. love Blackwood. <laughs> now, now you like the now Blackwood. I do because it, I, it's very stark and interesting. And I had one of the things that I always dreamed of when thinking of walking the Bilberman Track was seeing the mist in the morning at Blackwood, which I saw. It was right. it was lovely. <laughs> Going off topic here, but Sorry. you guys were discussing brutalism and Bilberman shelters <laughs> today on Facebook. So it's interesting that you enjoy Blackwood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, depressing. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. Whenever I think of boarding house, I think of the bridge rather than yeah, the campsite. I, I yeah, do too, same. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, let's yeah. talk about the most famous day of this section. One of my favourite days on the whole track. I, I love totally it. agree. Yep, totally I disagree. Agree. This is a hateful sex. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I loved it. But um, I think a lot of people do hate it. It's a polarising one. It's it love is. or hate. Yeah. And I mean, it comes down to experience as well. But um, Wendy Nelson, who's quite a well-known Billman track user, yeah. she hates this, she this whole section and this day in particular. But she hates the Carry Forest. She hates the Carry Forest oh. and she lives in the middle of the Carry Forest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she bought a property just so she can like, cut it uh, all down. <laughs> I, I think... Her hatred for the carry forest is is not far removed from my feelings about Jarrah. Yeah. Like, she has this very strong feeling about it that I respect but don't get because I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. I like the Jarrah as well, though. Although sometimes I find it a bit tedious when it's scrappy, burnt Jarrah, but by and large, I love it. Back to the roller coaster. <laughs> okay, back to the roller coaster. <laughs> so it's called the Donnelly River Roller Coaster. Except it's not a roller coaster to, be- to begin with. To begin with, it's a gentle, really nice, easy track, which my friends and I took two hours to get to Riverway Bridge. Oh, really? Because yeah. when we did it in May, there were mushrooms <laughs> everywhere, and all three of us, were, we just love the forest. Like, we were just going crazy over the mushrooms and photographing them. Mm. We didn't even start hiking until 10 a.m., and I just, like, I had in the back of my mind, I was like, if we're walking at night at the end, it's not the end of the world. We can just enjoy the mushrooms. Luckily, that... <laughs> oh, that oh. In what way, Bonnie? In what way? <laughs> we, did, we did find some magic mushrooms, but we, did, we didn't eat them. <laughs> Very well. No, but I agree. Like, that The section out is... Like it's you, you psych yourself up for this Donnelly River roller coaster. It's just a gentle incline yeah. through like a fairly wide four by four track. Mm. Which on the day we did it was really beautiful. I think we were lucky because it, well, it was a day of um, prescribed burns everywhere, which isn't necessarily the best, but it was really hazy mm. and there was a bit of a, a golden quality to the light for the whole day, which we really liked. Yeah. 
I, I really like when you're on that very slow incline and you look down into the valley and it's just really stunning. Mm. I think, especially in the morning light, I think you're quite right. There is a certain golden quality. Even even if it's not golden hour, it just has a yeah. golden look about it. Even if you're there at 11 a.m. on a day when it, when there are burns mm. going on. Yeah, no, I agree. And I had my beloved Kathmandu speakers going and I just figured out how you could translate YouTube videos to audio. Right. So I had lots of like two-hour soundtrack <laughs> like files playing. It was all like you know, pumping up your music and I was just, yeah, misty as well, which is probably what, like the same effect that you would have got, Bonnie, just with, yeah, yeah. the lighting all right and it was a I good think, way to um, warm up mistiness to mistiness or haziness really enhances the carry forest. Mm. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, any kind of forest really. Yeah. Just yeah, like even yeah, Jarrah def- can, yes. can look nice. Looks amazing. <laughs> I yes. think it's just because, like, you can't see as far so you're in this like little shroud, little world. Yeah. And, just, yeah. and it's also when you're looking into the distance, um, the far distance looks very different to the foreground. Mm. Like it, um, like if you're looking through the smoke haze, the other side of the valley looks a bit blue and a, yeah. bit, a bit faded, which yeah, is I can very see what nice. You're saying. Yeah. But then you get to after a little while, you go down a steepish short hill, mm. and you get to Wirraray Bridge, and that surprised me because I. I don't think I'd read the notes in detail. I'd been, I'd seen the other One Tree Bridge, mm-hmm. and Wirraway Bridge was a lovely surprise. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, I think it came as a surprise to me. As oh, well. I, might have, I think I read your blog before I did it, but I somehow didn't register. Yeah, same. Oh, right. I read your blog. And I was just like, yeah. I don't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Might have gotten it confused with the other yeah. one Maybe that I had already like seen. Eight right. photos of the the bridge and like a big. You are coming to this now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that particular section around the bridge, for some reason, is extremely mossy and wet. Yep. And it Even really in May, when it's all dry, it yeah, still was. It, it made me think so much of the Blue Mountains, of like, yeah, you know, how mossy everything is. That's funny. I, I yeah. thought it was like the Blue Mountains. So it was a really nice experience. You see it, and it's, it's just like a little microclimate. You know, that little section. Mm. Yeah. I quite liked it. And then after that's quite a steep climb, isn't there? Yeah, it's a bit of a climb. And then there's mm. a bit where you um, go down a bit of road and, and stuff. Mm. That, that was okay. But then after that, the bit along the Donnelly River, oh, where it's like, yeah. it's, that's one of my favourite parts of the day. And yep. the day is one of my favourite parts of the whole track. But it's like that single track, it's not on top of the valley. It's not in the bottom of the valley. It's sort of, you feel high up above everything. Yep. And there's a few... A few fallen trees. Yep. That when we, usually I hate fallen trees, but these ones I quite liked. When we were there, the trees had just fallen, like I think maybe a few, like a week or two earlier. So it was really cool because one of them you could crawl under. Yeah, I remember that one. And it, But what they've done now is they've dug it out a bit. Yeah. When we were there, it was not, so you had to kind of crawl through, which is cool. And then the second one, we had to climb up to the, where the roots were and then walk down and that was also cool. Yeah. Like, I actually really enjoyed it. And I think I think that's the feature photo for that day, is that photo of Alyssa walking up next to this giant fallen yeah. tree. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the, in general, the, the trees through there are huge and really beautiful, and you can see the views quite clearly as well. Mm. I think because you're a little bit further up. Mm. And yeah. that section, to me, felt quite magical. Like, I really felt like I was deep in the forest, like the, the mystical forest. Mm. Well, I think because it's such a steep valley, like, you wouldn't have thought any loggers, oh, not loggers, but people in the, the olden days wouldn't have been able to access that area very yeah. well. So it's probably got more protection than, say, some of the more open forest that is has been logged or has been logged at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's just really weird, especially the trees that have fallen down and like that's cleared, but you can see how steep it is and also it's cleared a little path and it's just weird looking down at the ferns and this huge giant fallen tree. It gives you like a weird perspective yeah. as you're walking next to it. Kind of, yeah, cool little detail of this, this bit. Yeah, and then after that there's the, the bridge across the... Yeah. yeah. The Donnelly and then quite a steep climb like on a road and then it's... You know, I think the bit after this is a little bit. That's the low light. I think you go yeah, through some like yeah. quite like thin, spindly trees. Like it's not bad. Yeah, so it's near, just... near the boundary where there's like a farm or something. I think. Don't know remember. If it's... It was an airfield near there. Oh, maybe that was oh, it. Because I remember okay. looking at the map and being like, "Oh, I might 
see something or some people and this is where I kind of gave up on ever having phone reception with Vodafone. <laughs> I was like, this is Vodafone. the highest point of the day, yeah. It's actually a good network to be on if you don't like to be contacted. <laughs> you go the whole section without getting a message yeah. or an update or anything. Yeah, that was the section. Probably, it, it's not the longest section. It was quite short through there. That was probably my least favourite of the day. Mm. But even then, I still enjoyed it because I remember, you know how I was saying about the haziness so f- through that section, through the scrappy trees, I could see a really long way and I could see the hills over the other side of the valley looking all blue and distant. Mm. But um, Yeah, so we took two hours to get to Rirare Bridge, but then I think that point where we started going up that big hill into the forest that didn't have mushrooms in it, that's when we sped up. And then from there on, we went really quite fast until we had a lunch break, but... Yeah, so our day was very uneven. Mm. Mm. I was going to say, oh, the hills. I mean, they're not to be sneezed at. Like, they're not steep, steep alpine passes, but they are fairly steep. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to what you would experience up until then. But not... I I didn't feel like they were too bad, possibly because I'd heard all about the Donnelly River roller coaster, so I was expecting something a lot harder than what it was but I think it might also be how used to hiking you are because I can look back and maybe four years ago I might have hated it like I remember finding like a section further north that is also quite hilly Helena to Wallach I remember finding that really difficult whereas now it's it's not Mm -hmm. so I think it might be like that and not just even if you're an experienced hiker but you're just not someone who likes hills or if you've got bad knees or just that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I find those hills easier if they're steeper because I hate like just gentle-ish inclines that go up and down, up and down. Whereas if I've got a big hill, you can mentally set yourself like, right, I'll get to the top of that and take a break and look around. Whereas some of like the smaller hills, you kind of get over a little bit easier. And it's just that mental thing of, I don't, like, it's not that I don't want to do it, it's just you can prepare yourself better for the bigger stuff, which is yeah. what you're saying, like, you were expecting more and yeah. you were in that mindset of, yeah, there's going to be hills today. Yeah. yeah. And then, but I enjoyed the hills mm. uh, because the hills came with varying views and varying landscapes. So if you didn't have the hills, it would just be the same thing all day, which would still be beautiful. But then when when you go up the big hills, all the vegetation changes. And so up on top of the ridge, it's all like grass trees and things, which you don't see down in the valley. I think the the one that I, I think is, is great when you look in the book is like the, the great drop, like the big one. There's the yeah. one where you just descend steeply down. To the bridge? To the bridge. And then you have the biggest up of the yeah. whole thing. And the biggest up of the whole thing, I do remember that being um, quite quite taxing. Mm. Like it, it's, it's not an easy hill. But it's still, it's not a bad hill. It's not... No, it's not too bad. Well, I actually found it because it's, easier than I expected. Yeah, and because it's a constant hill, I prefer that to a hill where you go up and then you level out and you think, oh, it's at the top. And then, oh, no, there's more. Mm. It wasn't really like that. Yeah. I think what's really interesting in in the old... I mean, I, I use the old, old chunky books, um, not the new ones. And I don't know what... I mean, they don't have this, I think, in the new ones. But the way they've broken up the elevation chart is interesting because they've broken it just at the descent and then the next page. Oh, so you that's can't, cheeky. You can't quite see it. And you, it. It doesn't register until you look at them together and go, oh, wow, that's a steep drop and then an immediate climb. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking at the, like, the runkeeper elevation that I've got and it goes from like 210 metres down to 90 and then back up to 240 within... A couple of k's yeah like it's you just it, the mountain or the hill looks quite good until you put in that dip <laughs> it looks quite interesting oh wow yes yeah, yeah. i mean it's exaggerated a little yeah. bit um but yeah it's just it's interesting but i think i stopped at the bridge halfway for lunch so i was like i didn't have the descent and then it was the you know the descent and the uh the climb back up yeah, we, we stopped after the climb. Yeah, yeah we so like, did we. We're going to do it, going to get up the top, and then we're going to... Yeah, and then we found a clearing that just, it just looks like it naturally lent itself to being a lunch spot. Yeah, I think we probably were in the same spot because it was pretty obviously a clearing. Yeah. Yeah. But something I found about that really hilly section is it was a very... Uh, we were there on a 
hot, dry day. Well, not really hot. It was like 29 degrees, I think. For some reason, the heat didn't bother us too much. But I think if it was rainy, that might have been slippery. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think it rained while we were doing that. But yeah, I can see your point. It could be. If it was really raining, I think yeah. it could be. Because yeah. we remember, didn't have that problem at all. I remember the, the climb up was a bit muddy, but it wasn't too slippery. And it had rained at lunch. I had to put my pack under the bridge to keep it a little bit dry. But it wasn't too bad. So yeah, I can't actually remember much away from that. From there. I quite enjoyed it. That's like the grass tree, sandy top yeah. of the valley bit for a while. I remember there was a lot of quartzite rock. Yeah, yeah, um, something a bit different. A bit jarra heavy. Yeah. It was okay, you know. Um, but I, I, I think, he, see here, while I don't love the jarra forest, what was nice is that there was, you know, the real change you, you get from being right at the bottom where it's nice and lush through the carry as it slowly fades into jarra. That yeah, was I, a, I liked that. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I remember thinking this section would be much harder the other way because as you keep going, there's another steep descent. Yeah, there is. And in the other direction, you would have two very steep descents, one after the other, which I think would make it much harder than the other well, way around. steep ascents or descents? Um, st- steep ascents, sorry. Yeah. So w- walking southbound, you get steep descents. But if you're heading the other way, it would be as ascents. Yeah. And I think that that makes it, you know, this. I I've, I've think I have said this before that I think that north to south is actually easier than south to north. And I think that this is one of the examples. Yeah, that I, I think use. so. Just in general. Also, um, after Blackwood as well. I think that's oh, yeah. probably easier going down than up. Yeah. And I mean, I think just you know, straight away where Kalamunda is versus where the the Albany terminal it's is. It's a little terminus. bit higher. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an extra 300 meters. <laughs> yeah. So immediately you've got to, you've got to get that from somewhere, yeah. right? I don't think it's all in this one section. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. So yeah, like you kind of finish the day along the Donnelly River again, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Which is nice little flat section after all of those hills. And some really nice tall carry. I remember being yeah. quite impressed by the size of the carry mm. as you reach Beavis campsite. I think by the time I got there, we were like it was just starting to get a bit dark because we'd had a really late start to our day. And so I think we rushed through there a bit. So if I ever do that section again, which I'm sure I will, I think I might slow down and take it all in. Whereas mm. we were just like, by that time, we were like, oh, it's nice. We just want to get to the campsite, light a fire, and mm. relax. Yeah, I think for me, I think it was just that last kilometre feeling like three kilometres. Yeah, I, I, I thought that too. Just wanted to get into camp Yeah. after all those hills. I remember being really happy to see camp. Yeah. Mm. Like and I it, always am, but that time. But that's like even such so. a nice campsite as well. Oh, I, I love yeah. Beavis. Yeah. I, I must admit though, I really want to do, you know, like hashtag Bear King. So <laughs> tempted to do hashtag Butthead. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yes. not going to do it. Yes. <laughs> Does anyone know why it's called Beavis? The reason for that, according to the book, is it's named of the surrounding forest block, named after Jack Beavis, okay. an early surveyor in the district. There you go. Well, that makes sense. Because I always think Beavis and Bye. <laughs> 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 I didn't even watch the show as a kid. I always thought it was <laughs> terrible, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it's is it one of it's one of two that has its own dam swimming hole. Because the other one yeah. being Schaefer, there's no other ones, are there, on the track? Yeah. Mm. yeah. I feel like there is, but I don't think there isn't another one. Yeah. But that's, you know, yeah. that's a really nice little dam there. If it's got water in it, in yeah. May, yeah. there is no water. I, right. We still loved Beavis. It was like one of, I'd say it's in my top five, even without the water. Yeah. I wanted there to be water because I like to swim at any opportunity. But I did the next day at Kerry Brook, so that was okay. Yeah. But, yeah, and, I, and the two friends who I did that section with, we all just really want to go back in the middle of winter and camp there when there's water in the water hole. Yeah. When we were there, it was full and it was freezing. I bet it was. And there there were leeches. Um, (laughs) But it was... We had frogs. We had like a little puddle at the very base and um, frogs croaking. I don't think there were frogs, but I remember, you know, it was really nice because we hadn't swum in any of the other places. Which surprises me. It was very cold, and I'm not that big on swimming, but it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, now it's time. I feel a bit greasy from this long day of walking. I'm going to go for a swim, and I'm going to wash my shirt as well. Yeah. So that was that was really nice. It would have been refreshing. Yes. 
But I think my favorite thing about Beavis was a totally incidental thing was a French tourist that we met there. I think I yeah, read that on your blog. <laughs> it's it's quite probably bizarre. one of my favorite encounters with someone on the Bibbleman just because of how ridiculously lost he was. You're such a sadist. <laughs> Take pleasure in this poor man's uh, navigational Just challenge. because the, the sheer failure of his navigational skills. But he would have had to walk for so long. <laughs> Cause we, so we asked him, he, we appeared, and he's like, so when does the track turn back? And we were like, um, Calamunda. <laughs> you've, got, you've got 500. Wouldn't it be funny if he hadn't seen you and then he just decided keep, keep and he would, oh, just keep going to Calamunda? And he was... Uh, then we said, look, mate, where are you from? Where, where have you come from? Where did you start? And he's like, couldn't quite give us an, an idea. And then he said, we said, was there a waterfall? And he says, yes. We went, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> And then we worked out, you know, and that's a long distance to have traveled yeah, that I've like not realized. Yeah. So we realized that he was doing the Beetle Up Falls walk around the lake past Carry Valley and missed the turnoff and then just kept going. Mm. Um, how he so utterly failed when the, the there like the sign at the junction is very clear. And you actually have to turn off to get onto the Bibbleman. Correct. Mm. And the fact that he ended up so far without going Hmm, maybe I've done something <laughs> wrong. And then when he worked it out, we, you know, he he was like, "It is my burden to bear," because <laughs> we were going to give him food. We said, "Look, just stay here for the night. I think it'll be safer than you trying to walk back." This is already mid afternoon. He he was wearing like fashionable shoes. He had a fashionable backpack. You know, not hiking clothing. He had nothing on him. He had this tiny water bottle. And we said, look, fill up. He's like, is it clean water? And we said, yes, yes, just drink it. It's fine. Um, I'll even treat it for you. How about that? Um, and we gave him some muesli bars, which was a real challenge because he just wouldn't take it because we were just worried he was going to die. And um, we said, look, just stay here. We don't have an... We, we can, you know, scrounge things together. We have one of those, like, foil, you know, heat blanket things. I said, you know, just, just use that. But he was just insistent that he was going to walk back to the car and... We didn't run into him again. There was nothing on the news, so we assumed that he survived. Yeah, I was going to ask, did you search the news? <laughs> like, just yeah, to see I did. A, a missing French tourist? Yes. Wow, that would have been a, a good story for him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Beavis Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I was not as fortunate to run into either French tourists or to have the damn fool that was empty. And I'd read your blog and actually remembered this time that this was a really cool campsite. And I just saw the big hole. I was like, oh, well, that, that's not great. <laughs> but the carry tree behind it that had fallen over, I really enjoy climbing all over that. And mm. I almost fell into said hole after slipping a little bit, but regained my footing. But it is, like, it's a nice setting and, yeah. It's just yeah, there's just of... something about it that's really special. I think it's the big, tall carry trees. Mm -hmm. I think also it was just, for me, it was the experience we had, like, we lit the fire and it was the first time trying out my new tent that I'd bought. And one of my friends made delicious hot chocolate with peppermint essential oil in it and marshmallows. And we just had such a nice time there. Fancy. Although there was a creature um, in the night. Uh, I think it was a possum. I, I was in my tent, but my friends in the shelter, one of them had the possum running around right near her head. <laughs> And it ripped a hole in my food bag, which was hanging up. Oh, I think I'd read that the animals trying to get into your food bags there. I think I yeah tied mine up as well, but didn't have anyone break into it. Mm. But I think this section lends itself towards the normal up style campsite. I think so too. And this is actually the first one, isn't yeah. it? Of the, well, yeah, it since, is. since except for the, except the ones for that Possum Springs yeah. and Brookton. I yeah. think it's something about lying like lower down and not having the bunks there. It's, I don't know what it is because you can't even see the trees yeah. that much when you're inside um, the campsite. But it's just, yeah, I quite enjoyed the that shape. And then you got the little cutout bits where you can sit and enjoy a drink and yeah. mm. stare out into the forest. Yeah, I agree. I generally prefer the ones with the top bunks and bottom bunks, especially somewhere like Helena or Wailik where you're looking out over a view. I prefer that, but for these campsites nestled in the forest, I think the Nornalup style is, is perfect. Mm, I think that's a really good distinction you make because I think 
Warren wouldn't be as good with a Nornala. No, it would not. But Beavis is right with a Nornala. It's perfect, yep. yeah. That's a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Nailed down. <laughs> um, and one thing we haven't talked about is this is, is am I right in saying this is the start of when they start putting the fire firewood sheds onto the side of I the... I think it is. Oh, no, there might be one at... No, there's one no, at, at, B, the, at um, yeah, the Tom boarding Rod. house. Tom no, Rod. I meant like Donnelly River to Pemberton. That's when they start yeah. putting in the, yeah. the yes, firewood sheds, yeah, which so. is a good idea because you it don't want idea. people going and pillaging the nearby forests for bits of scrap and... Like in that area, most of winter and spring, you're going to get wet wood yeah. if you're foraging out anyway. Mm. So I do enjoy that they provide it for you. Yeah, I really yeah. like that. Like it's better for the environment and also it makes it so easy when you get to camp and they provide an axe as well, mm. which if you think about axe murderers, it maybe it's not so worry. good. You look at it and you're just like, there's yeah. my word of murder weapon right there. Someone comes in, I'm gone. <laughs> I think as well, you know, like they they do provide firewood in the other sections because they're always burning Jarrah and they fall over. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, they, they are providing there, whereas they don't do as many prescribed burns in the carry. Yeah. No, so. that's true. But I think in general the Donnelly River District um, DBCA seem to put a lot of effort in. I also noticed through there, I can't remember how far north it starts, but they have, like, proper toilet paper dispensers. I know that's down through um, to Northcliffe. That might just be the volunteers, though, taking more pride. Because it does happen a few times where you get, like, this is dedicated to so-and-so. Mm. And they're really, like, upgraded, yeah, drop toilets. I thought it might have been a DBCA thing. No, nah, generally it's the volunteers <laughs> that have to do that. <laughs> Having the thrilling, Murray... thrilling topic of toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Toilet paper. Well, I'm going to upgrade the Murray campsite. I've done some research and I'm hoping to put in fairy lights that yeah. are solar-powered. Because the fire risk is not, like, it's negligible. That would actually be awesome. I'm generally against having light. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that we've had a <laughs> civil disagreement about this very we most, topic. We most definitely have. And I'm adamantly against technology in in the shelters. Yep. But I will make a concession for fairy lights. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> next uh, next maintenance trip I do, which may be a while considering we've had okay, so I'm gonna, much I'm going to look forward to going back to Murray. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the ones I always want to ret- return to, but I haven't yet. There will be fairy lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone will complain in the book about oh, it. Oh, someone yeah. will. Actually, yeah. if, if all the campsites had fairy lights, I, I might get a bit grumbly. But if it's just one, if it's one and it's a gimmick, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like it's... What about a disco ball? Maybe on a future. <laughs> it was the other fairy lights go first. <laughs> but yeah, getting back to the topic again. Um, the next day, which Don, you thought was maybe a little bit harder in hindsight than the roller coaster day. I actually do think, and I, I, I said this in discussion with the other people who did the section. They said that they felt this day was probably just as hard as the previous day. But because we were unprepared for it, we found it harder. I think if you objectively looked at it, it probably isn't harder. But we were expecting this day to be more interesting, <laughs> more, <harder>. more, <laughs> more of a bit, more of a breeze. I think compared to what it was. But on that, because I did map this out, there is nine less vertical meters on this day than the previous only one. Only nine. Only nine. So it is comparable when it comes to the hills. Mm. So you're not wrong in that regard, and. Because you've already gone through that roller coaster day, you expect every other day to be not as bad. Yeah, and, exactly. Unless you've read The Long Ways Better, <laughs> as I had done. And I went into it expecting the worst. And there were sections of it that, that I loved, and my friends did as well. We really loved some sections. I know the bit that you don't like the, the worst. And yep. I remember, I, I think I'd kind of forgotten what you had said about it, but at the time I was just, we were commenting, we were like, Another right turn. We must be going around in a circle. Yep. So I, I'm going to read... That bit was yeah, a bit we'll get this out kind of, of the tedious. way. Yeah. I'm going to read the, the guidebook directions because you can see why I was really frustrated. So 7.8, turn right on regrowth boundary. 100 metres yeah. later, turn right into forest again. And then 300 metres later, turn right on regrowth boundary. Have we and gone in a circle? And 100 metres later, turn right into forest again. Then 700 metres later, 
turn right on Rigoth Boundary. We're spiraling. And then 200 meters later, turn right and descend away from Rigoth Boundary. And then we have a left turn, but then we have another right turn. Oh, and then a 9.3, turn right on old track. And then turn right and parallel <laughs> creek. You know, yeah. like how many freaking right turns? Yeah. So. And it's all through kind of dense, but you know, even like the carry forest, it's dense, but the trunks are really thin. That's probably the sort of carry forest I like the least. I still mm. love carry forest even when it's like that. But yeah, we found that bit. We were happy. We were laughing and making jokes and having a good time. But yeah, it was a bit of a slog. It was like, let's get over this bit. Mm. And it was quite hilly too, but like lots of little up, ups and downs. Yeah. And th- but because it wasn't interesting, you know, like the, the forest, the, I don't know why. Because it was it's, okay. It's, it's like regrowth Jara. You know, it's... The because, worst thing in the universe. Well, the, no, well, so Regroth Jarrah is the worst thing in the universe, but Regroth Carry is not quite the as bad. The worst thing in the solar system? Uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, no, no. That no, no, still, it's still, it's still Jarrah. <laughs> but the yeah. problem is that the understory becomes like a monoculture. Yeah. It just doesn't have the interest where just it's nothing different but soap thing. Bush. Exactly. Um, I love this. <laughs> I actually didn't <laughs> Did notice really? the right. Yeah, I didn't notice the right turns. And you look at the map, and it does a little U-turn. So what do you expect on? And I'm guessing you're not a fan of NASCAR either. Not really. Because that's just right turn, right turn, right turn, right turn. <laughs> no, I just the thing is, I, I, I like to be in entertained and be and yeah. have interesting things and also know where you are because there were so many right turns exactly i didn't know when it was going to end am i at 7.8 and I was, I was just looking out for the, the footbridge <laughs> you have you have woggles that are falling. like the only yeah. thing i remember from this section was i was looking out for the board that had broken a bit and you said that Alyssa had jammed her foot in and that there. was before that was, the, that was the bad before? bit but we no, can that even was go after back after the bad bit i thought that was what? during the bad it's bit it's after no what? no, ah. no so, so so you've got to completely no no i, th- I don't so think you're, so you're you're thinking before you're thinking <laughs> i'm thinking during. the lead up it was to after. The, i'm thinking the lead up to the carry marry yeah so looking at it uh i'm actually incorrect <laughs> And Mark is also incorrect, I'll say, but Bonnie is right. That I have the memory of an elephant. <laughs> the the bit where Alyssa fell through the boards was actually before that bit. So yes, and I was keeping an eye out for those boards, but because we were there in dry weather, they weren't slippery at all. But I, I did see the the scene of the the, the scene incident. of the incident. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but you said that you liked this. this I liked section. um yeah, I liked the bit. Leading out of Beavis Camp early in the morning, we found that quite beautiful. And the little clearing to the right of the T-junction we loved. There was a surprise that wasn't really mentioned in the guidebooks or... I don't think... Did you have it in your blog? I don't think you did. Well, did, I, did you I not c- see it? I we can't went, even we remember where the, the board was, so... Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, then up through some more carry, that's where there's like a tree that has an altar cut out of it. It looks like it's natural, unless it's a reference tree or something. But it's okay. just like, you know that... Um, uh, pointed arch shaped like a little window in the tree oh, yeah. it's quite nice yeah and yeah and then um yeah and then there's the bridge and then seven day road crossing mm. after the seven day road crossing which we thought if we come back to beavis we could do that as like an easy weekend walk it's only seven k's so we could go down to pemberton do some touristy stuff and then go and camp at beavis mm. um, but then after that there was what i thought was really beautiful and Donovan, I thought of you and wondered why you didn't mention it in your blog because it was a, a very beautiful Jarrah forest with big trees that were not burnt. I think you'll find that I actually did comment on it a little bit. Okay. I talk about in, in there, there's a mixed forest Yes, section. the mixed forest. Yeah. Yes. I loved that bit. And that was that, beautiful. That was actually really interesting. I actually find the mixed forest bits more interesting than the carry in this bit because it's all regrowth carry. Yeah. I thought that was my favourite bit of forest was the mixed bit. And maybe also heading down towards the lake, which I don't think you liked that much, but the forest was a bit burnt and it was big trees but quite sparse. Mm-hmm. I liked that bit too. Mm. I enjoyed this bit. Uh, the bit before Seven Day Road, you come up to a bit of a ridge and there's all these giant carry trees. I just remember walking through there and the sun came out and I was just like, wow. I remember that bit being nice too. Yeah, this is just amazing. You, like, you do those, like, it's not really amateur photography shots, but like you point the camera straight up and you've got all the trees. <laughs> yeah. I remember doing a couple of those thinking, yeah, this will look cool and then they never do. But yeah, I think I commented that there is mixed forest between after Seven Day Road 
and then the next one is Waistcoat Road, which is... And then after that is where Alyssa had her little incident. Yeah. And it it looks like when you did it, it hasn't improved. It hadn't improved at No, that I've stage. got a picture of it here. Where did it go? And yeah, it's just... I remember looking at it, I was like, that's exactly where she did it. This is like five boards of uneven lengths, not going as you would expect for a bridge. They're going left to right vertically. Yep. Probably not the way that would describe it. They're going the way you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you could just fall between the yeah, gaps. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Was it still there when it you It was went? still there. I but reported it was dry that, you know, and two years ago, and obviously nothing's been done, which is not great. But read the long ways better, you'll be well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were well prepared. Or just read the logbook, because we read the logbook and. Multiple people have been mm. fallen there. Well, so. then what's Alyssa's excuse? He's not here to defend <laughs> herself. But... Anyway. anyway um, I think let, let's move on to some good bits here. The no, carry no, marry. The carry thing. marry. I want to go back to the bad bit because <laughs> oh. I've got it written here. Donovan commented that he did not enjoy this section, saying it was unnecessarily hilly for no apparent reason, and I would tend to agree with him hey. to a degree. Oh. I didn't find it to be a bad experience or that boring given the constant gradient changes, but a couple of times I did check the GPS against the map to see when it would end. Yeah, and I thought it, it would never end. I felt like we were dis- like spiralling into some weird alternate yeah. universe where it's like a maze where you just constantly turn right but you don't end up where you started. You're just spiralling inwards. Yeah. So, we, yeah, we found that a bit tedious. But I think because I was with friends, mm. it was okay because we were laughing and joking and running along. And we, we did that bit quite quickly, I think. Yeah. Mm. But I if think... I'd been alone, I reckon I might have gotten bored. Mm. Yeah. But you know, it does end, though. My, but my, you know, my criticism of that is, like I said, you know, there are sections of the, the Jarrah Forest where you can put the photos in any order and they'll be correct. <laughs> And this is so true of this particular it section. It kind of is. You could take any of those, any photo of that section and then jumble up the order and it would still be correct. That's but exactly that, what you would have seen. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be like a no. meditative experience. That, that's just... kind of why I like the carry forest. Yeah. Is that's what you're there for. There's no distinctive forest like scene that you want. You just want... Yeah. Good quality forest. But it's I not agree, except quality. it's not good quality <laughs> forest. It's, quality. it's, it's you like guys skinny are just, just getting hung up dense. on directions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the, the carry the marry tree. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. And yeah, it has its own like it. Bibbleman red sign as it well. It does, yes. Yep. Well, I suppose you kind of have to point it out because some people might just walk past it and go, oh, yeah, there's two trees growing together, not realizing they're separate species. Mm. Cool. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And it's right, it's, I think it's like this nice little uh, reward for the boredom is you've got that and you've got uh, and Carey Carey Brook. Brook. Where That's where we stopped for lunch and I went for, that's a, little, where we I went well. for a swim. Yeah, I stopped yeah. for lunch. Oh, and we well. saw a guy ride past on his horse. What? <laughs> I know. He didn't know. He, he went up to Carey Brook. It was quite random. I went for a swim and my friends were still eating lunch and I could hear something. Like I could hear a horse whinnying. I almost didn't into like a... I'm not going to do that on the podcast. Do it, I, do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I could hear it stomping. And, and I was like, what is that noise? It sounds like a horse. And then I looked up and sure enough, there's a man on a horse. <laughs> but he didn't go across the ridge. He, he turned around. Right. But it is a beautiful little spot. Yeah. Because you kind of have to clamber down. There's that like log that's fallen over and you have to climb behind it and get down. There's a really nice like little waterfall rapids bit. Mm. Yeah. Good for some long, long exposure shots. Yes. It's good for a soak, but the water is freezing. It is the same. Any bit of water, you'll just jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty but much. You know, that, that pool is tiny as well, yeah. but you still are like, no, I'm yeah. going to do it. Well, I, I was disappointed that there was no water at Beavis, and right. I, I wanted to go for a swim. Yeah, it's a really good spot. We, we It was actually raining while we were there. Same. <laughs> but it was still, you know, nice. Yeah. We, we stopped near the bridge. There was like a bit of a log next to it. And mm. Yeah, really good spot. Yeah, it's very pleasant. And I think that, that to me was a bit of a transition point because it sort of left that, and it went into more Jarrah yeah, forest. Yeah, it did. But I, I didn't actually like liked, that. Oh. I actually liked it better than no. the carry. No. I was grumpy I in that yeah. section because <laughs> I, I left my it. walking poles behind where we had lunch. So we kind of we set off at quite a fast pace from our lunch spot, and then I realised I'd forgotten them, and then I yeah I was 
grumpy. I had to go back and get them. Oh, then I was happy again because I was I just ran back. But I, I remember thinking, oh, I just want to get out of this bit. <laughs> I think the reason why I liked it was the time I was there was perfect for wildflowers. So, you know, I think what I like about the... When you do see the transitional kind of jarra, you get that really nice, dense understory. And so we had that with a lot of wildflowers. That would have been nice. So it was nice. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it. And it, to me, was an improvement on the regrowth carry, although Mark disagrees. Yeah, I did not enjoy this section. Like, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't as good because it took you away from the carry. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, it's okay, but just get through it quickly. Yeah, and then you, you cross a road and you go down towards Speedlup Lake and that area was completely burnt out. And I just remember being so disappointed. When and I, I liked through. that area. I think mm. I, I was there, it would have been three months ago, so like a year after you went through. Mm. And it was starting to regenerate, but it was still very sparse and the trees were still a little bit burnt. But and, and by that stage, the weather had changed. It had gone cloudy and it felt a bit spooky in a nice and interesting way. So mm. I enjoyed that. Also, I was aware that we were nearing the end of the hike and often... If I've been hiking all weekend, it's sort of a little bit sad knowing I have to jump in the car and drive four hours. So I was just enjoying that last little bit of the hike before mm. we got to the lake. Mm. Mm. And then the lake is a, um, a not really nice landmark to reach. Mm. I think, you know, I think before the lake, while we have disagreed about why, I think we can all agree that this section has something that is a bit tedious. Even you, know, you may not, you may like the regrowth carry or you mm. may dislike the the jarra or you may or vice versa but there's something tedious about this section that is not as prevalent in the other parts of Donnelly River to Pemberton. I disagree I, for me I found that the first bit past Tom Road to be the most tedious although right. obviously it has it's so subjective that could have been just the mood I was in that day and it was it was kind of a hot day so I was just like I just want to get to Tom Road and go for a swim mm -hmm. so it could have been that but I thought there was a lot of um, regrowth carry and a lot of just gravel roads at, on that first section. Mm. So, but you wouldn't so say I, that I the preferred, regrowth... Oh, you did. I preferred that third day because I still felt deep in the forest and cut off from civilization. Mm. Yeah, I liked the first day because of the wildflowers, but that was a, a seasonal thing. Mm. But I think from the lake onwards, we could agree it's good. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> Mark. Definitely. What do you mean? I love this section. <laughs> yeah. This is actually the first bit of the Bibbulmun I ever walked. Wow. Uh, in 1999, I walked this section. Uh, I was there for a birthday. We were staying at Carry Valley Resort, and then we walked from there to Beetle Up Falls and back. Yeah. So this was the, the first sort of introduction little Donnie had mm. to the Bibbulmun, and, and it was on that trip that I decided I was going to do the whole thing. So, you know, it has a lot of, I guess, personal connection to this particular section of the track. Yeah, it's a yeah. special section. Mm. Mm. And it's beautiful as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, just having the dam there to create the lake and being on the other side of Carry Valley, kind of, you're still disconnected from civilization. You can see the buildings and you know it's only like a kilometre and a half that you can walk and go get a sausage roll or a chalk milk or whatever. But then sitting, did you guys go to the jetty? Was it frog, frog, frog sleep, sleep jetty? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. when I was there just recently, it was um, semi-submerged. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, it was like going down into the water. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I remember just sitting there and it was you know, like blue skies, with little fluffy clouds. I just sat there. I didn't plan on sitting there for so long, but I was probably there for like half an hour just watching everything around and taking in the calmness and the stillness and... And then I was there a few months later doing riding up the Beetle Up Falls track and I realised that the carry tree that it goes into the water there had snapped and a bit of it was raising up and I was like, I had to double check the photos. I was like, ah, oh. like it just shows you how like how much time it takes for that to happen. Yeah. Mm. That's actually where I ended and then restarted. So in May we finished up at um at Carry Valley. Wendy, who we mentioned earlier, picked us up. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very um, kind person. He's become a friend of mine. And she drove us back to Palings Road. And then, yeah, three months later, it was the same group of friends plus one other. We set off again from Carry Valley. We were disappointed because the restaurant was closed. We were thinking of starting the weekend with lunch by the lake, which we still did. We just had a picnic instead. 
so that mm. was okay. Mm. And then so we walked around past Frog's Leap Jetty and then you get to Beetle Up Falls. Mm. So we spent a long time there. I've been there many times and I've done that little walk many times. Yeah. But in August, it's just raging with white water and so it's definitely worth spending a bit of time. Um, so, yeah, the next bit to Beetle Up, I really like that section. That's the really short bit from the falls down to the camp. Mm. I remember was it, it being longer than... Yeah, was, I remember it being long. I remember <laughs> yeah. that too, but it was like really beautiful forest, but there's mm. just a hill that goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. But it was... Mm. Really lovely. We should mention that the falls is probably the best. It, it, well, oh, it yeah, is the best waterfall the of the entire track. You know, yeah. like it. I don't think there is a better waterfall, is there? Yeah, I would give it that. Yeah, I someone, mean, will, someone will correct it. They'll be like, <laughs> no, it goes near Niagara yeah. Falls. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. you know, it's it's really nice. It's a good major feature for the section and for the day. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's kind of weird as well because you come out from that very feels quite remote all through from One Tree Bridge South. And then suddenly you get to, to Beetle Up Falls and there's all this infrastructure. Often there'll be lots of people around as well. Mm. So it's a bit mm. of a tourist attraction on, on the um, Carry Valley Explorer Drive mm. and people from the resort. And paved pathways yeah. for a little bit. Which that I'm not throws a fan you of. Off. Yeah. No. Yeah. But I do enjoy that suspension bridge where it is located. You can just yeah, like, good fun. jump on yeah. it and then it gives a nice view of the falls. and Yeah. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Did you see people here? No, <laughs> no. Wow. I actually stayed a little bit longer. We were just like milling about, checking out the little loop trail that they've got there. I'm just like, no one's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll head off now. <laughs> but that whole area has a really interesting history too. Um, so the, there's a bunch of hippies that owned, or a cult that owned Carry Valley Resort, and then they. I think they turned against the local community or something. And they well, they, they were out. hated because they were the the um, the Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh people, yeah. the uh, the orange people. The orange they? people, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. going to say, was it the orange people? Because I've yeah. been told this story from my grandparents who lived in Denmark, where there's also a bit of a, maybe not so much now, but in the 80s, 90s. There used to be. Now, there was yeah. a, um, definitely a hippie element down in Denmark too. Yeah. So, yeah, I heard all about the, the orange people, but I didn't realise that was Cary Valley. Yeah. They're more famous for their what they did in the US, but yeah. the most famous quote came from their them settling oh, in Pemberton, yeah. the tough titties yeah. quote. Because <laughs> 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 they were like, people were like, we, ha- we hate you, get out of our town. And she was just like, tough titties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you listen to the, the Cary FM that they've got there... Um, the area used to grow hops for the Swan Brewery, oh, and dear. they reckon it used to give a very distinct flavour because of the the carry loam that they grew in. Mm. And then they just obviously stopped doing that. But I wonder where their farm would have been around the area. There mm. is like there, there's Hop Garden Road through there as well. Does that make sense? That's yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Because the mm. the people get to name the roads if you own big properties around there. Yeah. Which is probably why, like I didn't mention this before, but like a lot of the roads are interestingly named. Like yeah. there's Panda Road yeah. and Sunshine Road and there's all these weird ones that you think isn't Australian road naming. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, as we said, the walk to, from Beetle Up Falls to Beetle Up Campsite, longer than you expect. And I kept... that, that hill as well, it's really Yeah, rocky. it's a never-ending hill, but mm. beautiful forest. Mm. I kept having mirages of the hut, like I'd see something and be like, <laughs> that's it! That's it, we're almost... No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was disappointing. But I like the I like the campsite. Yeah. It's... I love that campsite. You love it? Yeah. More than... Okay, if you're going to rank them, where will you put them for this, this Equal section? Equal with Beavis. Oh, wow. That's, that's so... quite a... Mark, are you in the same... I did not get to bond with this campsite as much as I'd like because as soon as I got in, it started to rain. So I didn't get to like mill around and explore the campsite as much as I did. So I'll reserve judgment until I visit it another time, I think. Mm. Well, I really liked it. Well, when, it might have just been when we were there in the middle of winter. It was raining a little bit, but not too much. So we got a fire going. I liked how there are three benches. That's good if you've mm-hmm. got lots of people. Mm. There was plenty of space if there's a school group or a hiking club or something. Luckily, we had it to ourselves, which was nice because we often like to stay up late and drink some wine, have a campfire. Um, I had a bit of an incident because I got there, my camera ran out of batteries, and I realised 
my spare batteries in the car at Carrie Valley. Oh, no. And I just thought, I cannot do the full day into Pemberton without my camera. Yeah. I would just be so sad. Why even do it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If I don't take photos, did I even do it at all? Probably yeah. not. Yep. So I had no other option. Like We had our fun times around camp. We had dinner. It was my friend's birthday a few days later, so we made him a cake out of chocolate and stuff. That was fun. Had a candle. And then at about 8 p.m., I was like, all right, I've got to walk back to the car at Kerry Valley. And I honestly didn't mind. Oh, and before that, my friend made me a face mask as well, so I was hoping no one would see me. <laughs> <laughs> While walking. Yeah, yeah. She, made, she made face masks for us out of honey and cinnamon and all these, like, essential oils and stuff. So I had stuff all over my face. And then, so I set out in the night. One of my friends was like, oh, I think you shouldn't go alone. So he came along. I was like, you don't have to, but if you want to mm. but it was really nice at night like crossing over the waterfall and looking down at the white water it was very interesting to see mm. and then all the carry trees or some of the carry trees around the lake were lit up from below mm. and i got my spare ca- camera batteries i was just so happy to have them and we were trying to walk really fast so when we got back i was a little bit hot so then i went and i had a had a swim that was very very nice and then a very peaceful night's sleep listening to the the water mm. And then, yeah, the start of the next day's walk. So mm. what, what did you think of Beadle Up? It was, I, I liked it. I didn't, I don't think it's, for me, is as nice as Beavis. But I think there was a nice sort of sentimental quality to it because we'd been walking with the same group. Basically, we'd walked with two of them since the start, since bailing Up. And then we met up with a couple who recently just finished their their end. I saw their names in the book because I've been. Is it Sonia and Peter Peter. and Sonia? And I saw their names at Rame Head, and I it made me really happy because I'd read their story on your blog about how she broke her leg. So, So it it was that was our last sort of night with all all of the four of them. Yeah. So that was a bit sort of sad, you know, because we weren't going to be going any further. Yeah, so we we took a photo of the group, and yeah, it was just it was just you know we we didn't walk with them, but we were at the campsites with them every day, and you, you know you really get to know people over that short amount of time, and it, it felt a bit sad to to be the ones who are not going to be continuing on. Yeah, so. that's often the hard thing about doing a sectional end to end; you can't just keep going. Mm. Whereas you had a completely different experience, Mark, because you saw no one. I was just alone. But I was reading another guy who'd written um, in the Red Book and he was, had the same thing. He's like, I haven't had reception since Donnelly River. I haven't seen anyone since Donnelly River. I was like, I understand, buddy. I understand. <laughs> At least you've got the Red Book. Yeah. And I just, this was a, when I, I think someone, maybe Pack Animal, had ripped out um, Jason, Red Pen Jason's oh. comments in, you, the f- in the first two books. Do you know it's Pack Animal? No, I'm not going to accuse anyone, but I'd heard that he did that. Yeah, I, I heard it. I heard he yeah. did it too. Um, so I have, it, if, it, if it is, whoever did it, did it, I have really strong hatred for that, that this was done mm. because if, yeah, someone is, if someone is critical about the track, I think that that's fair enough. And I don't think, well, Jace was both sometimes critical, but then also just rambling like you know, he 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 has OCD. So yeah. it's and I think it's you should let people express themselves in the book and don't censor it. So I think so too. And I know when I'm happened. when I'm by myself for a few days, I've written some weird ramblings in those books. Like I, if I get into camp late and I'm tired and I'm just I just start writing and writing and writing. Mm. And I think that should just be no matter who you are and what you're writing, that should be respected. And I think it would be really sad if if he were to go back to a campsite and find his pages ripped out. I'd be a bit, I think, mm. what's going on there if that was me. Mm. But he had drawn a lovely little map on how the track goes through Pemberton. <laughs> oh, really? Because I think someone must have commented or he'd read a few things it. and he'd drawn a little map of where you meant to go when you get to town. But that kind of put me in good spirits because this was the night I was expecting thunderstorms and heavy rain, and which didn't turn out, but like I'd only looked at the forecast four or five days ago and this was when it was going to turn bad. But yeah, luckily for me, just a bit of overnight rain. Mm. That's good. I got to see a little blue wren on one of the oh, little nice. picnic tables. Came, we we saw a, a variegated fairy wren, which delayed us at camp because we were looking at it and trying to take photos. <laughs> Yeah. It's always lovely to see. Mm. Yeah. So getting out of Beetle Up, 
It's not the most interesting carry forest. Yeah, it's I all thought right. it was all right. It's okay. I, I quite liked that first bit, especially down the hill to the farm. Mm. And I cooeed back to my friend and she yodeled back to me. And then we heard a bunch of cows <laughs> moving at us. And that's when we realized, oh, we're getting close to the farm. Yeah. yeah. I and think the trees there are quite big. There's quite, yeah, I remember they are. the mm. carries and the black butts are really big along this section. Yeah. But I just remember it being. Because I like the closed-in carry forest, and this was really open, but it's true. kind of not open at the same time. But then once we hit the farmland, that's when I really started to be like, oh, something different. Like, yeah. I really enjoy this. Mm. I enjoyed crossing over the fences and then down, like, there's like a line of trees that was quite nice, and there were cows, yep. like, mm. staring at us. That was that was good. Yeah. And but I've, then I'm not I've... so sure about the next bit through the... We'll go back to the yeah. road because it's a favourite name of the Chani Bear Up. <laughs> How yeah. do you pronounce it? Is it... Ch- I think it's Ch- Chani Bear Up. I think yeah. is. I'm sure it's probably saying it wrong, but it looks like it's just like Chani Bear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always think it's very cute sounding. Yeah, because one of the guys we're walking with, Jerry, he was not. He was from um, Tweed in New South Wales, and he asked, "What does this all mean?" And I said, "You know, it's up means a place of." And he said, well, then what's a Chani Bear? <laughs> um, and unfortunately... It's a good question. It is a very good question. Uh, unfortunately, Chani Bear Up is probably becoming more well-known now as a place where they're cutting down a lot of old-growth forest. Oh, no. Um, yeah, they just... They wrecked. still do that? Yeah, they yeah. just clear-filled a whole area that, that is... had four or five hundred-year-old trees there. That makes me furious. And they're also clearing out a land to grow avocados. Mm. So you drive along Chaney Barrett Road now, it's just avocado farms everywhere. We saw mm. the avocado trees. They're, they are very good avocados, but mm. at what cost is the thing that I'll yeah. say. You know, I think we can find a balance there. And the fact that they're cutting down, you know, four or five hundred year old trees. No, that's awful. Is, and, and, and let's be honest, what they're doing is they're making wood chips out of it. Most yeah. of it is wood chips. And they're not making a lovely table or, you know, a counter or something out of it. They're making wood chips, mm. which is disgusting. Yeah. You know? But back to Chani Bear Up, if you happen to know what it is, because I Googled it and there's no reference to what it means. It's just the town or the hamlet, I suppose it is, of Chani Bear Up. Mm. So if you know, please email us at realtraildog at gmail and we can get to the bottom of this. But yeah, the, the kind of it's that farmland area, it's something different... And if you get the cows in that paddock, because you have to climb over into the paddock and walk along those trees, which at the time of the day is normally morning if you're going into Pemberton. It's quite nice if you get some sun rays through the, the clouds. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area. I, th- I remember as well in that section that there was a really lovely tree in the middle of the of the field. Uh, not lovely enough for me to put it on the blog, apparently, because I can't no, see I it. I think I, I know the same tree. I took photos of it. But it is really yeah, lovely. I know the one. I think um, it was my cover photo, maybe. Are you talking about it's to the right? Or yeah, is it... that's the one I'm thinking Yeah, so of. if you're walking through the field, it's in the middle there, and because it's been allowed to grow without any anything to prevent it from growing wide, it has grown really wide. So I really liked seeing that in the middle of the field. But apparently not enough to put it on the blog, so I remember it, though. I remember it, too. <laughs> Let me see if I remember it. That one? That's the one. Yes. Oh, yeah. For everyone who's listening at home and can't It's a see very it, tree-like we'll... tree, like the perfect tree shape. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more of what those kind of trees in a like that setting would be. Because like, you see sometimes where people have planted natives and they're in an open space, they branch out a lot more, mm. whereas the ones in the forest kind of grow straight up and have a little canopy at the top. Yeah. yeah. So we'll post that onto Instagram so you know what we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the bit after that, you were saying, are you guys... I, I liked it, but you're not so sure? Oh, it was a bit long for me. The, it was okay. There was a nice bit where you walked past the um a fly creek i think it's called that was quite nice was there water when you yeah it was full of water mm. that was part of the reason why this bit was a bit annoying it was like, it was all right but it was just a bit samey and we had lots of puddles and so i got wet feet lots of carry hazel trees down which was slightly and they're slightly annoying to walk over they my hair always gets caught in them 
and then I'm worried I'm going to end up with like a receding hairline because it's always the front bit of my hair gets caught. <laughs> and so I was like, oh no, I can't lose any more hair from the front of my head. <laughs> and either that or we soon, I started just like stepping on them if I could and then using them to bounce. That, that was kind of fun. Actually, now that you mentioned it, I think that we had a similar experience of like having to push through fallen bushes. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it would be all right if it was just for a little bit, but it just seemed to go on and on for ages. Yeah. Well, there's the halfway point where you go under the power lines and around there somewhere, there's also a random little lake. Yeah. yeah it's like, a, like a dam. Just a pond. on some road, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's I actually right. enjoy that. Like the as you come out of that farmland section, it's just like open space and then like dense, dense forest. Yeah, and it's just like a gateway into like another little world. I enjoyed that, but yeah, I think I just found I was past that little creek and that little kind of dam next to the farm. Um, I just remember putting my head down and being like, if I go flat out for an hour, that's six Ks, and then I'll be six Ks closer to Pemberton. (laughs) Yeah. I certainly had the glint of pie in my eye as I was walking this, because I had the ten on a plate just visible in my mind's eye. So we were just powering through. And I I actually wrote on the blog that while it is tedious, the section, I didn't find it as tedious as the regrowth forest. And it was at least flat and quite easy going. I yeah, think it was. Because mm. you have 25Ks to get through in the day, there has to be those sections where you put your head down and say, yeah. I have to get this out of the way. And it is, there's not a bad section to do it in because there's not much to look at or stop. And mm. yeah. Yeah, I'd say all in all, it wasn't bad in the context of everything else. But for me personally, that was a little bit of a tedious section but it's also how I was feeling that day I was a bit lethargic and tired possibly because I'd stayed up late and done an extra like seven k's to your regular day (laughs) oh no because the day before was really short so I don't know why I was tired I just was I was thinking about the drive home but then it became really quite special going down a big hill on kind of a wide road and you start seeing Ah. the pine trees and things yeah Mm. I, I really liked that bit. Yeah, I think as you start, just before you get to the... It's quite magnificent. And really, the carry trees there oh, are huge. Yeah. Mm. Before the plant, the, where before they've got the, the arboretum. Yeah, before the, yeah. It, Is that how you say it? I thought it was an arboretum. Yeah, so I've so never known how to pronounce that. I, I think it's arboretum. I might <laughs> no, be pro- saying it wrong. Right. There's a cultured man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, that, you're quite right. Like, I think that the carry trees there were um, were really magnificent. And when yeah. we were there, they were almost like speckled and different coloured. Yeah. You know, they are eucalyptus diversicolor, meaning, you know, multicoloured. I thought that's their leaves. What? I thought that's name they named mm. for their leaves. I think they're named for, the, for the trunk. The, the trunk. Because yeah. they're, they're, there's so many different colours. Although I'll accept yeah. being wrong. Oh, he's going to check this. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I remember the understory just being beautiful. With, yeah. There was, you know, wildflowers about, very mature carries, and then all of a sudden you see these, like, sequoias that mm. are growing. Yeah, and this... they're such a different shade of green. They really stand out. Mm. Yeah, I remember this section because I'd got reception for the first time in ages, and I checked something and found out it was international nude hikers day or something <laughs> and i really thought June. yeah i really thought mm, do i try and do like a post for this but i was like <laughs> i was so close to civilization i thought no someone's gonna pop around the corner and catch me out incorrect wow bonnie has corrected us once again <laughs> yes so yeah bonnie has just shown us that uh yeah diversity color is not about the the trunks but the leaves so there you go However, I think it's <laughs> I think Donovan it's, is not wrong. It's just, it's just as apt. <laughs> it is. Not um, on Wikipedia though. You're wrong, Don. Yeah. Right. Just accept it. Yeah, we, we are using Wikipedia as the yeah. source for that. Um, yeah, going back to the, the ar- arbitorium. <laughs> the arboretum. arboretum. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's beautiful, but I think it's, uh, uh, excuse my French, it's a little half assed Oh, it totally is. Yeah. Like the ar- the arboretum. Ar- Arboretum. <laughs> the arboretum itself is a bit lackluster. It's all right. It's nice to come across that. It's more that mm. it, section leading up to it was what I thought was amazing. Mm. And the it, arboretum, I've been there before on walks around the the dam. Mm. So yeah. it's Although, no it's no Golden Valley. Well, the thing is, like going north to south, you've seen Golden Valley Tree Park first. 
And Which this, is much more interesting. Yeah. Like this just kind of seems like it's been plonked in the forest. Which it has. 50 it, years it wasn't ago, there yeah. as a tourist attraction. It was there to see what grows. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly mm. it. They just wanted to see what will work and what won't work. And then they were like, oh, I guess these work. I guess these don't. But we're not going to do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, then you walk into the pine plantation area, and this is that carpet of orange as the leaves drop. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just another little thing to bring you out of like the carry forest. Yeah. But I think that's kind of nice as you're approaching town. So you've had this these days of being deep in the forest and then this section, it kind of draws you out of the forest, mm. like a little bit of farmland, a little bit of introduced trees. And, and then, then you've then got of course the, the dam walk, yeah. with, the, with the pavement, which it isn't mm. my favourite. No, no. It's okay. Oh, and then there's a little, we stopped in a little shelter thing and had lunch. Yeah. With Walter the Water oh, Molecule. Yes. I love Walter. <laughs> and Alyssa, Cleo. Alyssa and I were talking about how, like, there was just that period in the 90s where they loved those <laughs> yes, comic strip did, stuff. Did, yeah. And they just put them up. It's, it's like the Bibbleman track. All the huts have that. And then, yeah, so we, we read the full story. We also noticed the lady in the bath has, like, weird shoulders that had. <laughs> really? <laughs> going off topic that. here. <laughs> but she's got little shoulder, like, um, proto arm type things, <laughs> and then she's got her arms. Interesting. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. I remember going back there like a few months later to do the Big Brook Dam ride up, and I was just like, as a 31 year old male, I should not find this as entertaining <laughs> <laughs> as like a 10 year old kid should. That it's like that's the target audience. So I was like, you go, Walter. Like you climb up that tree, and then you get out into the water cycle and go yep. off to Antarctica and come back again. <laughs> You be your uh, best self. <laughs> I think other than that, though, like when you finish the dam, it's like, oh, thank God. Yeah. You know? Although well, the dam wall is a bit of fun. Like we walked yeah. over it. We looked at the water cascading down. Mm. Oh, and then there's a big hill. But the forest is beautiful. Is. Yeah. That last section, I it kind of got less and less good as you got towards town and saw like yes, pump I stations agree. and... Um, civilization encroaching on the forest mm. but that i thought it was really really beautiful along before rainbow road and along rainbow road yeah, yeah. but Up i did think lefroy brook it's yeah that amazing. was lovely and i was like you see lefroy brook later on um on the the way to warren like the cascades mm. but for some reason i it just surprised me how much water was in it probably the time of year there mm. were rapids and mm. uh, i think you might have mentioned in your blog about seeing rapids and things. Yeah, even there was some rapids there. Later in the year. Yeah. Really nice area. I think, you know, you're quite right. I think it gets less interesting as you get closer to town. Yeah. But the forest there's it's really... It's huge trees. Mm. And when we were there, there was a lot of wildflowers again. That would have been good. So it was, you know, lovely. Really I did lovely. think, though, as I was walking that last bit, I was just, I was in the mindset of, oh, we need to get back to town. My feet were hurting a little bit too. And I thought I would, much prefer to do that whole day I think I'd enjoy it more south to north like starting off walking out of town and feeling like I'm going deep into the carry forest and leaving all that um, trout farm and things behind mm -hmm. and then getting to beetle up I, I just think and, and through the farms I think that would have been a good first day rather than a good last day yeah I can see that but then you'd have the more difficult roller coaster day yeah, that wouldn't bother me too much. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree. That's a fair assessment. Because you'd get, yeah, like the pavement walking out of the way. Wouldn't be so jarring. Yeah, that, mm. even the first little bit um, past along um, Rainbow Road and Lefroy Brook, that would be quite interesting yeah. to start with. Yeah, mm. I'll give you that. But yeah, and there's the hydro dam bit as well, which isn't still functioning, is it? I don't think so, no. It's just a building there to tell you what it was. Yeah. And then you get into the mountain bike park, yeah. which is kind of... Uh, I didn't realise it was a mountain bike park <laughs> until I got to the end and saw all the signs. Yeah. And then you kind of... You're in Pemberton. Yeah, yeah. there's a Pemberton swimming pool. But it's like a bit of like a like a dull suburban side of Pemberton as yeah. well. Yeah, because you've got the, the school camps there and the Pemberton pools there. That's kind of interesting. Are made yeah. like, yeah, the get the carry reflection off the, yeah. the steel mm. pool. Uh, you, but you, the problem is, if you're going north to south, you're very rarely going to see that in mist, which is when all the good photos happen. No. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I think one of the nice things is while it's you know goes through suburbia, there's some really lovely old houses. There are. On that there's last only a tiny row. little bit of suburbia, and then there's yeah, that um, lovely red timber cottage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On, kind of on before the corner. That's a really nice sort of landmark. And then yeah, I really right I love the the cottages of Pemberton just mm. in general. I keep meaning to. I think there might be some on Airbnb. I keep meaning oh, to go that's and stay a really in good one, idea. one mm-hmm. day. Yeah. yeah. But Pemberton, the the final walk in, I find really not enjoyable at all. There's something about like the main strip of Pemberton that it's just so bare and barren. You've come out of this carry forest, and then there's just like there's that really long cleared section mm. as you walk to the main strip. I was just like, yeah, that last bit up. Back up to the visitor centre because, of course, you got to go up to the the trailhead to mm-hmm. have officially done done it. That was just we just ran as fast as we could because it's just on the pavement. But it's so short; it didn't bother me too much. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not great. I think that every town generally has a little bit of yeah, it does. You know, it doesn't quite work perfectly getting in and out, but you know. It, you, I think you have to put up with that, unfortunately. It's just part of going through town. Yeah. But I, mean, I always compare Pemberton to Dwelling Up. Yeah, Dwelling Up. I was just thinking that's... That is true. Pemberton yeah, could nice. be Dwelling Up if it wanted to, but yeah. there's just no trees. Like They've just cut everything down. And the view from the top of town is you're looking over plains and fields and... No, I think I love Pemberton. Maybe not the main street itself, but the side streets with the little timber cottages. With like the old oh, cinema. Yeah. And yeah. Cinema. yeah. Smoke and coming out of the chimneys. I think it's Sadie's quite Restaurant, nice. which just looks a little dated now. It looks like it's from the 70s or 80s, but my dog is named Sadie, so yeah. I enjoy that. And I really like the bakery in town. They're very good. Yeah, they got mm. good pies. They make very good pies, good sausage rolls, good croissants. I yeah. used to really love the Millhouse Cafe, but that's closed, I'm yeah. sad to see. Mm. And if you can time your sectional end to end, or you know, if you can get, if you can be in Pemberton on a Saturday night, and you have a nice pair of clothes that you can change into, <laughs> I thoroughly recommend going to to um, Foragers. The food there is exceptional. I think it's one of the best places you can eat in the um, the Southern Forest. And I mean, she wrote the book, Sophie Zalakar, who's who owns the restaurant slash. Um, bed and breakfast kind of and and cooking school wrote the book on food of the southern forests so definitely mm. worth checking out if you think so thoughts on the section how about we go round table again like we did on the hike your own hike favorite campsite beavis beavis tom road yeah favorite day of hiking roller coaster day Roller coaster day. Yeah, I'll go roller coaster day <laughs> as well. But I would say very close would be uh, Tom Road to Boarding House. Yeah, I I agree with you there too. Because of how it captures the Donnelly River Village spirit, yeah. I mean Donnelly River spirit, I should mm-hmm. say. Yeah, I think those two days combined, are exceptional. Mm. Yeah, if you could do One Tree Bridge to, to Carry Valley as a weekend walk, fantastic. Yeah, a long weekend. Mm. Um, recommended time of year to go? September. August, September. I'm going to go winter. That's a difficult one. Yeah. Mainly for the fungi. Like, I'm not too worried if there's no wildflowers in the carry forest. I'd rather see the fungi. Yeah. I think August, you have a, a really good chance of seeing everything. Yeah, the you're... wildflowers, they're only just starting to come out, so you get a bit of hovier, a bit of... Mm. Well, it's yeah. September would give you a bit of... You know, there's definitely still yeah, mushrooms September. around. But... Are there? Maybe not as much. Not as so much. I'm finding this yeah. difficult because I've done bits and pieces because it's sectional hike and I've done some of the sections more than once. So every season except summer, mm. every season had something I loved about it. Mm. So I don't know. I really liked autumn... For well, the the trees are losing their bark in autumn. I quite like that. Yeah, they get the mm. the big sort yeah. of the shedding. shedding. That's nice. The mm. the mushrooms start coming out properly around May June. That's worth it. Like I think it's some of the best mushrooms on the track. Mm. Maybe there and also around like Chidora to Pemberton was quite good as well. Mm. No, Chidora to Dwelling Up. <laughs> to Dwelling Up, I was like, not Pemberton. That's, that's a, a long, long section. section. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. So the mushrooms and then. The wildflowers in October were 
really beautiful and, and so many of them mm. i don't know i can't decide <laughs> ah, tbd and this has been a long podcast so we'll finish up with this donnelly river or pemberton as a track town drv uh i like pemberton but i'll have to say donnelly river village because it's just a it's got something special about it yeah i think everyone will knows after my comments about pemberton yes. <laughs> which i will choose uh, one okay now, where do you put this in the whole track? Because I put this as my second favourite section, town-to-town -town section of the entire track. I can't really comment because I've left... I haven't done a lot of the good town-to-town -town <laughs> sections on purpose. So I would say this is probably the best one that I've done. That you've done, so yeah. Far. Yep. Yeah, I'd mm -hmm. say second or third... But yeah, it's up there. It's one of my favourites. Mm. Maybe depending on my mood, first, second or third. Cool. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. All right. Well, thanks very much for listening and be sure to subscribe on iTunes. Give us a rating, a review. Nothing. Don't rate our <laughs> podcast like Donovan would rate the Burnt Jarrah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any uh, questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at realtrailtalk at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll be back in two weeks.